today I'm going to show you guys how to make tiled transitions. All I have in the project is my pixel perfect camera which you can find the link to in the description. Let's begin by drawing our transition sprite. So I'm going to create a new sprite here, name it SPR transition. And let's make this a 16 by 16 sprite. Now I'm just going to keep it simple and just have a growing square until it covers the entire frame. So that's looking pretty good to me. Now that we have our sprite, we can begin with our object. So let's create a new object. I'm going to name it O underscore transition. I'm going to add a create event. I'm going to add a boolean named transition and set it to true. Now let's add a draw GUI event. Let's check if transition is true. Let's create two local variables, i and k. We're going to create two for loops, one for each of these variables, and we're going to have them iterate as many times as our game's width divided by sprite get width. So here we are getting the width of our transition sprite, and now we're going to do the same thing, but for the height of our game and the height of our transition sprite. I'm sorry. Do that. K equals zero. K less than global. Dot game height divided by sprite get height. SPR transition K plus plus. Now you might not have global dot game width and global dot game height. Those variables we created in my Pixel Perfect camera tutorial. So if you do not have those, please insert your width and height here. Now here we are iterating as many times as our width and height. So let's draw our transition sprite as many times as we need in order to cover the screen. I'm going to do i times 16, k times 16. If we compile, we should have a covered screen. It's not loading, that's because I forgot to add an instance of our transition object into the room. Now that I've added it, it should be there. There you go. Now, it's only showing these little dots because it's showing the first frame of our transition sprite. So let's try it with the last frame and see if we have a covered screen. There you go. Now you'll notice here a portion of our screen is not covered. That is because our height is not perfectly divisible by our transition sprite's height. So what we can do here is add one to it. And we should have an extra sprite at the bottom being drawn in order to cover the entire screen. There you go. Now let's work on animating the sprite. So let's go back to the create event and let's create two new variables. Let's name it transition sub image. Sorry, equals zero. And transition speed. And let's set that to 0 0.5. Now let's go back to the draw GUI event. Let's replace this 7 with our new transition sub image variable. 
and let's go outside of the for loops. Let's do transition sub image plus equals transition speed. Now, transition sub image starts at zero, and every frame we're going to add 0 0.5 to it. This should make our sprite go through all the frames. And let's test it out. There you go. As you can see, we have all our sprites animated in order to cover the entire uh, screen. Now, obviously, the issue is it's looping and uh, it's all going at the same time. We want it to go from left to right. So what we can do is we can subtract the sub image by eye, which is our uh, horizontal variable. And that should offset each sprite drawn to the screen, which frame it's drawn horizontally. Now the issue here is that the way in the way game maker works that even if this is transition sub image is zero and it's uh, subtracted by let's say three for the third column it's going to go backwards in the transition the sprite frames so it'll go from zero which is this frame and then it'll go minus uh, three for the third column so it'd be one two three so it will draw this frame on its third column even though it's supposed to be drawing the first frame or we want it to draw the first frame so what we can do here is let's create a local variable inside the for loop and we can call this right sub image and we can make this equal to transition sub image minus i I forgot the equal sign And then we can replace this here with the sprite sub image. Now what we can do is we can check if the sprite sub image is less than zero. And if it is, we will set it to zero. And let's run that to test. There you go. So that, on the first iteration, it worked closer to how we wanted to. But now another issue is the exact opposite. If transition sub image goes higher than the uh, frame count of the sprite, it'll start all over again. So if we have eight frames and transition sub image is nine, it instead of it staying on the eighth frame it will go back to the first frame and start at 9 and then 10, 11, 12, so on and so forth and then just keep looping. So now we have to check if it is let's do an else if sprite sub image is greater than and we can do sprite get number now this will let us know how many frames are in a sprite so we'll put in our transition sprite and then we'll make that equal to sprite uh, sub image is equal to sprite get number spr transition uh, another thing I forgot to mention here is we should do sprite get number minus one on both of these because in Game Maker, let's open up the sprite here, the first sprite, the first frame of the sprite, I'm sorry, is counted as zero. So Game Maker starts counting frames at zero. So this isn't one, this isn't frame one, this is frame zero. And the next one would be frame one. But when it returns the count, it'll give us 
8 here, because here it starts counting at 1. So we have to do minus 1 to make sure it does not go over. So if we play that, there you go. So it does not loop anymore, and we have it covered the entire screen successfully. Before we continue here, we can make some slight optimizations to our code to make it easier to read for us. So we can create a local variable and name it sprite frame count. And let's set that equal to sprite get number spr transition. And let's replace the sprite get numbers in our code with this new variable. Let's create two more local variables. Let's do one for sprite width. We'll set that equal to sprite get width SPR transition and sprite height. Set that equal to sprite get height. SPR transition. And let's set those in our for loops to make it easier to read. So now what we have to do is reverse our sprite animation here. So what we can do is let's add an if statement before the transition speed line and we're going to do transition sub image is less than sprite frame count plus let's add an opening parenthesis global that game width divided by sprite width and let's close that we can add the transition sub image line in the if statement so what we're doing here is we're checking if our transition sub image is less than the frame count so how many frames are in our transition sprite plus the total amount of columns we have that we need in order to completely cover our screen because remember here we are drawing our sprite and we're offsetting what frame the sprite is being drawn at by i i is our variable that's iterating through the entire game width divided by our sprite width. So if transition sub image is less than this, we know that we are still in the process of animating our sprite to cover the screen. Once we go to else, so the transition sub image is greater than this number, then we know we have finished uh, the animation to cover our entire screen. We can do transition equals false. So this will take us completely out of this if statement. Now we can do else. And in this else, we want to start reversing this sprite animation that we have going on here. So what we can do is we just do the reverse of this. So we do transition sub image minus equal transition speed and now we will reverse the animation now uh, if you haven't noticed our nested for loops are inside the transition is true if statement and not else so this isn't going to work so what we can do is copy and paste our nested for loops paste them after the if else Let's get rid of the indentations there. And uh, we also need these variables, these local variables we created outside of the if statement because they are being used down here and in the if statement. So we can just paste those at the top. So if we run this, we should have the animation cover the entire screen and then once it's finished, reverse. And there you go. Now, 
Uh, there are still a couple issues. As you can see, we still have the first frame being drawn all over our screen. So what we can do to remedy that is we can add an empty frame at the beginning of our sprite animation. So that way when it reverses, it goes to the empty frame. We can test that now. Covers, goes back, and no more, no more of those dots. Now the other issue is we are still drawing the sprites even though they're they're all on the first uh, frame so which is blank we're still running this piece of code so what we can do is in our else statement when the transitions finished if transition sub image is less than zero so we know it's completely finished uh, with the animation for every single sprite drawn on screen. We can do instance destroy. Can spell destroy. This will delete itself. The object will delete itself once it's finished with the animation. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to these patrons for supporting my channel. If you would like to vote for the next tutorial, download the project files, and have your name appear at the end of my videos, please consider pledging to my Patreon.